all members recorded their vote. There were 38 votes in the affirmative, none in the negative, and the act passes. Item number 14 on today's calendar by Senator Lynch Prada, Senate Bill 174 Sub A, an accurate legal labor relations, minimum wages. Chairwoman Lynch Prada. Thank you, Mr. President. This bill would increase the minimum wage beginning January 1, 2020, to $11.50 per hour uh, from the current uh, minimum wage, which is $10.50 uh, per hour. And I move passage. Senator Lynch Prada moves passage of the act, seconded by Senator McAfee, Senator Goodwin, Senator Miller, uh, Senator Felag, uh, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Chacon, Senator Lombardi, Senator uh, Sheen, Senator Nestle Bush, Senator Cassada. Uh, Senator Metz, uh, Senator Lawson, uh, Senator Archibald, Senator Cano, Senator McKinney, Senator Bell, Senator Valverde, Senator Murray, Senator Coyne, Senator Golden, Senator Seventy, and Senator De Palma. Discussion on the act, Sen Senator Reptakis. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, I rise to echo my concerns on raising the minimum wage without doing our homework. So what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is we're raising the minimum wage in six months from $10.50 an hour to $11.50 an hour, and that's a 10% increase. But yet the Consumer Price Index for the year 2019 is forecasted at 2.5. Since 2013, we've raised the minimum wage 43.5% in the last six years. But yet the Consumer Price Index has only been 12%. We look at our neighbors, Connecticut and Massachusetts, at $15 an hour, and we think that's a great idea. But we need to take advantage to say what we can do in Rhode Island. So if we raise the minimum wage, $10.50 an hour, and adopted a CPI, like we've done in the past, in 2008 and 2009, this body raised the minimum wage and adopted my CPI by a vote of 33 to 4. But it didn't pass the House. Shame on us. But yet, from 2007 to 2013, nobody got up here to complain that the minimum wage stayed at $7.40 an hour for six years. Six years, zero. Other states, Michigan, the car capital of the world, building our automobiles, is at $9.45 an hour today. But what they've done is they're increasing the minimum wage for the next 10 years at 25 cents an hour plus CPI. New York State, New York State, New York City, it's kind of expensive to live in New York City. Their minimum wage is they got a plan. They're raising it to 1180 on January 1st, 2020. They're gonna go to 1250. And then after January 1st, 2021, they're going to raise the minimum wage by using the CPI until it gets to $15 an hour. Going back to our advantages, if we kept our minimum wage going up gradually, 1050, 1075, 11, 11 and a quarter, we'd have approximately a $4 advantage an hour between our neighbors of Massachusetts and Connecticut. So $4 an hour times 40 hours is $160 a week times 52 weeks is $8,340. Can you imagine how somebody over in Seekonk can say, why not relocate and help our state grow? Or from South Attleboro, or maybe from Connecticut. And I've argued the fact that for many years, we should look at what's best for our state, not become the Joneses and look what Massachusetts is doing and what Connecticut's doing. New Hampshire, is at $7.75 an hour today. And they're not going to raise the minimum wage. They let the economy, they let the business owners decide where wages are probably from demand. And you know what's going to happen when mass goes to $15 an hour by 2023 in three and a half years? You're going to see an influx of business going into New Hampshire. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, like I did in 2008 and in 2009, when nobody wanted to listen here, 
I'm going to propose my same minimum wage bill with a CPI increase, and that this body, and I have the names here, I brought up the journal, dated Wednesday, May 27, 2009. This Senate twice, by a 33 to 4 vote, passed the minimum wage increase with a CPI. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to offer an amendment, LC00816-2, and what this amendment does, it allows the minimum wage to go up to 11.50 an hour. I'm not going to argue that, because I think a lot of us do support it. But after that, let's apply the CPI that is given to us every year by the Department of Labor. Those figures are released every March 1st. It gives businesses from March 1st to the end of the year to get ready what the new minimum wage is going to be. But what we're doing again, sticker shock. Six months from now, we're going to go to 11.50, 10% increase, and who knows what we're going to do afterwards. So I challenge the state senate to really look what's best for Rhode Islanders and adopt something. When I started this debate in 2008, there was two states that had CPI. Today, there's 18 states, and there's about another five this year. They're probably going to adopt a consumer price index, and I move passage. Senator Packus moves passage of the amendment LC 000816-2, seconded by Senator Morgan. Discussion on the amendment. Uh, Senator Rappakis. Thank you again, Mr. President. And the one question that I did not ask is we raised the minimum wage from 10.50 an hour to 11.50 an hour. How much more money does the state going to collect in our budget? Anybody calculate that? How much is it going to cost our small businesses and workers' compensation insurance? Because that only goes by gross wages. So if some small business is paying $50,000 a year and their wages go up to 10% to $55,000, that's going to be a 10% increase on their workers' comp. Their payroll taxes are going to increase. That's part of business, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not arguing that. But what I'm going to argue is work with business, work together, give a warning. At least all businesses, by adopting the CPI, are going to know exactly what our costs are going to be, and we're going to be competitive we're out with our neighborhood states. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Aptakis. Senator Bell. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm of two minds on this amendment. On the one hand, I think that uh, it's a good idea to increase the minimum wage by CPI. But my concern is, is that the spirit of this amendment seems to be to imply that we shouldn't be doing larger increases. And that's problematic. And you know, it's good policy. I support CPI adjustments. We should do that once we get uh, to a reasonable wage. My concern and the reason I'll be opposing this amendment is that the spirit seems to be that it's insinuating that we should do this instead of further increases. And further increases are deeply warranted because we need to help working people who are struggling to get by. Thank you, Senator Bell. Senator Chacon. Thank you. On the amendment, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Takis's bill was heard in labor, along with other uh, bills pertaining to minimum wage, and the committee made a recommendation to hold it. So with that, I would recommend my colleagues to oppose his amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Chacon, for the discussion on the amendment. Senator Aptakis. One more last time. I wish we could go back to 2008 or 2009, but ladies and gentlemen, lastly, one more danger that we keep ratcheting it up, going up a dollar here, a dollar there, with no focus on what the future is. But let me tell you what Big Box is doing, what Home Depot is doing, what Walmart's doing, what McDonald's are doing. When you go to your local Walmart and Home Depot, there's less and less human beings working. And there's more checkout, self-checkouts. They keep growing and growing and growing. As, as we increase minimum wage, when we don't have a precise tool that the Department of Labor gives us, those self-checkouts are going to keep growing. And matter of fact, I saw one at my local drugstore for the first time. 
two self-checkouts at the local drugstore. And I'm not going to name the major chain, but it's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Reptakis. Further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, the clerk will please unlock the machine. If all members have recorded their vote on the amendment, the clerk will lock the machine. There are eight votes in the affirmative, 30 in the negative, and the amendment fails. Back to the act. Is there discussion on the act? Hearing none, the clerk will please unlock the machine. Have all members recorded their vote? There were 32 votes in affirmative, six in a negative, and the act passes.